you can see up on my screen now is the tree, tree crown or vegetation density layer that was derived using the Worldview 2 imagery in eCognition. So in the last step I took that tree crown layer and I actually intersected it with my Landsat grid and this is what it's created for me. So you can actually see that any of the polygons that I have here have been chopped according to where those individual grid cells lie. So if I click on a polygon there you can see that it now actually has a boundary associated with it so it's, it's no longer crossing those grid cells. Now what I want to do from here is to go back to using R and the geospatial modeling environment to calculate the amount of area covered by those vegetation polygons within each Landsat grid. So I'm going to close the arc down there and just remembering that I've got R already up and running but minimized and I'm going to pull up the geospatial modeling environment. Now I'm going to search for the polygon in polygon analysis tool. So this just pops up here, ISECT poly poly and if I click on that I can view the description in the tab here which is telling me what each of the individual options are and exactly what that tool is going to do as well. So for my first input here I'm going to select my Landsat grid and this, this means that this is what it's going to calculate as sort of the zonal area and the polygon within that will be my tree crown intersect data there. So I've included both of those and the field that I'm interested in is that area in metres squared. So this is going to allow me to sum the total area within each of the Landsat grid cells. For the prefix I'm just going to put PIPA to stand for polygon in polygon analysis and this is just going to remind me exactly what that field that's going to get added to my attribute table is associated with. Now each of these options I'm going to click on fox, false because I don't actually want those to be calculated. I don't need them in my output for what I'm doing. With the exception of the AWS which is the area weighted sum. Okay, So that's actually summing this, all of the areas within each of the polygons in the Landsat grid cell. So then I can just hit run for that and that will go through the process and what then actually happens is if I come back to land to arc view my Landsat grid file will actually have an additional column added to the attribute table here so you can see it's got the PIPA for the polygon in polygon analysis and the area weighted sum so that's that column there so what this is showing me is the the sum of all polygons within that Landsat grid cell and I can order them if I like or sort them so that I can look at the maximum area and I'll be able to see that the maximum area is 900 meters squared and this makes sense so this is basically a Landsat grid cell that's covered completely by vegetation. So Landsat being a 30 by 30 metre cell, its area therefore is 900 metres squared. Okay, so if this column doesn't actually appear immediately, you may need to close down, um, either close down ARC totally, save your project first, or you can just remove that shape file and then reopen it again and then it will refresh. So what I want to do from here is to actually calculate this percentage. So I know the area, for example, is 900 metres squared of vegetation, but I want to know the percentage of vegetation versus non-vegetation. So what I'm going to do is to add a field here, and I'm just going to call this percent. And I can accept those defaults there and just click on OK. Now what I'm going to do now is to calculate what percent equals. So I go into my field calculator by right clicking on the field heading there and just accept that. That's basically just telling me that I'm going to calculate outside an edit session and that's fine. Okay, so my percent field now is going to be equal to the area weighted sum. So I just double click on that to pop that down there. And I want to divide it by 900, which is the sum of the area within a Landsat pixel being 30 by 30 metres and then I'll multiply it by 100 to convert it into a percent. 
So I, I could have also just divided by 9 there as well. So when I click OK, that should populate my record there. So it's calculating all of those 576 records. And that this error is fine. This is basically just letting me know that I've got some percentages that are going to have a value of zero, and that's fine also. That means there's no vegetation in that particular Landsat cell. Okay, so now as you can see, these areas or the, the Landsat cells that have a value of 900 for vegetation density also have a percentage of 100. And if I scroll down that table, then I can see the varying percentage values all the way down to areas that have zero vegetation in them or essentially next to none. Okay, so the next step now is to be able to visualize this. So I've got my percentage values and I can understand exactly how much I have within each Landsat cell. So I'm just going to close my attribute table and this time I'm going to click on my Landsat grid and go into properties. And what I'd like to do is to be able to visualize that particular percentage column. So I, if I click on <clears throat> Click on quantities there. Um, I can work with graduated colours, for example. And what I want to do is to look at the percent column. And at the moment, this is in a natural breaks, but I might just change that to being a an equal interval. Okay. So you can see I've got five equal intervals there of 20% in the range. And once I click on OK that's going to apply that. Alright, so now if I zoom out to my entire Landsat grid, zoom to a layer there, you'll be able to see that these areas in this dark brownie colour are actually between 80 and 100% vegetation compared to the really light areas have 0 to 20% vegetation as decided by what we've got within that Worldview 2 image there. So the next step will actually be to both qualitatively and quantitatively assess how well that pattern applies and we can see where, where there might be problems with that as well.